Okay, let's slow it down and talk <laughs> about primary bradycardias. Uh, so bradycardia, you can have a lot of cardiovascular causes of this. So ischemia, 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 very common cause of bradycardia. You can have sinus node dysfunction, you can have conductive conduction system diseases, cardiomyopathy. Um, you can have something sort of infiltrating that co uh, conductive system causing problems and communication issues um, and some sort of inflam local inflammation or surgery or trauma. We have a beautiful conduction system and it works wonderfully when it works, um, but all sorts of things can go wrong and you can have many different locations, right? So you have your um, big boss, your sinoatrial node up there, your AV node, and you can have a, a sort of communication issues at any one of these points. Looks kind of like an octopus, but all of these oh, yeah. areas, whether oh, yeah. you're talking about this bundle, that bundle, that right. fascicle, they all are, you know, supplied by different blood supplies. So if right. you have chronic ischemia over time, you tend to damage these things over time and pretty soon they're just not going to function as well right. anymore and so that's often where we where we get with the, with patients it's pretty awesome when it works perfectly but not yeah. always things happen um, so ischemia sinus brady occurs with basically ischemia infarction of of the LV um, area, if you have wall ischemia, uh, you can have... Uh, Most common, the inferior wall. Uh, I'm yes. sorry, yeah. inferior yes. left ventricular yeah. wall, yeah. And you have increased vagal tone associated with it. So the, uh, the bradycardia associated with this actually is often transient. So you don't necessarily have to treat. But I think an important clinical point is that because it's due to increased vagal tone, you can actually treat it with um, atropine. It's mm -hmm. actually fairly responsive. One of the few times when atropine is, is helpful in bradycardia. Uh, you can have sino uh, uh, SA node ischemia, very common with when your RCA is involved as well, or left circumflex. So you may have uh, myocardial ischemia that impacts your AV node. Um, the sort of low degree AV blocks, the first degree block, and the second degree AV block type one or wanky block, Winky Bach um, is generally stable. You don't need to, to treat them. They're usually uh, of little consequence. But the higher degree AV blocks are much more serious. The second degree type 2 um, and third degree, uh, the type 2 can progress to, to complete heart block. Um, and those often involve the RCA. If you have, um, it really sort of your, your management depends on what area is involved. So if you have inferior ischemia, try atropine with anterior ischemia. Atropine isn't going to help as much. So you need to go straight to pacing. So that low and high degree heart block, it's really worrisome versus not so worrisome. If we see a first degree heart block where we still see P waves, there's a little bit of a distance between our P wave and our QRS, but we still have P waves. That's first degree, no big deal. There's no specific treatment for that. And then we have to talk about our secondary. There's type 1 and type 2, just as a review. Remember that if you have the P wave and it's kind of progressively marching out and then you drop one, that is not as big a deal as one where you just basically have a fixed rate between your P wave and your QRS, but you're dropping out unpredictably. That's sort of a harbinger of badness that we don't know mm -hmm. when all of a sudden we're just not going to conduct at all and the two things are not going to talk anymore at all. So we've got really non-concerning and very concerning types of heart block. Third degree, obviously, is obviously a big deal when our P's and our QRSs aren't talking anymore. So let's just walk through an EK, so a few AKGs as a reminder. This is first degree block. You see the P waves. You see our QRX. Everything's lovely. It's just a little bit too long between the P and our QRS. There's some kind of a block happening there, but it's not impacting our electrical system. This one is the classic um, Winky Bach or Mobitz one, where, again, it doesn't look too, it's not slowed down too much. Certainly, this isn't too much of a bradycardia. But if we look closely at our PR interval and our P wave, we see that that PR interval is getting longer, longer, and then dropping. But it picks back up again, looks normal, and then longer and longer, and then dropping. It's just kind of a warning sign to where we get here. And we've definitely slowed down here, haven't we? So this is a Mobitz type 2. Now we look at that P wave. I see a P wave. I see a QRS. But then all of a sudden, they're just kind of like not talking intermittently. This is like, OK, next stop on Something's the bus is a third on. degree. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon, you're not going to see so many QRSs on this EKG. You're just going to see Ps and QRSs happening randomly which is what happens here. So all of a sudden we are really in bradycardia territory and we see P's and we see QRSs, but there's really no correlation. And as I measure those out, there's no predictability to it. This is a complete heart block and very, and very dangerous. Obviously, it's very, very slow. And if the patient's symptomatic, this means we need to do something.
I had a very cute patient with complete heart block. He was like 85 and he, his heart rate was 25. And he's like, I feel a little dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, not You're so barely Yeah, confusing. I know, yeah. I know. Um, so treatment of heart block, again, those lower uh, um, blocks, are, it's really just no treatment. Um, you get them follow up. Um, but the higher degree blocks, pacemaker is really the treatment of choice. Sick sinus uh, syndrome, uh, sinus node dysfunction. Uh, often you these patients will require pacemaker um, as well. And um, the treatment of sinus node dysfunction um, should often you know, it depends on their symptoms, yeah. bottom line. So if they're asymptomatic, you don't urgently need intervention. They all need follow-up because there's a reason why this happened. Um, if they are symptomatic, again, um, it depends on how symptomatic they are and they may need a pacemaker. Other uh, cardiovascular bradycardias. So if you have conduction system disease, this may happen for a variety of reasons. Congenital heart, you may have intrinsic AV nodal dysfunction or something. Uh, basically treat these patients as a primary uh, bradycardia. If you have some sort of infiltration of the heart, um, same thing, you treat them as primary bradycardia. Um, if you have a local inflammatory process, the most common is myocarditis. You treat them as uh, secondary bradycardia, basically similar to MI. You want to stabilize them if they are hypoten or hy hypotensive. Um, they may need inotropic support as well. Yeah, I think the difference here is that there are some bradycardias that are just really not going to reverse. So it's a primary right. bradycardia. But like something like myocarditis or there might be ischemia to the node that might recover. There may be a period where it looks very mm -hmm. slow and maybe we can temporize it, but if we could get them to recovery, if we could reperfuse them, or if their myocarditis could subside with some kind of anti-inflammatory treatment, then that's really a secondary bradycardia that we want to see if we can temporize, not necessarily put in a pacemaker. They may not always need that. So that may be something that might resolve as a possibility.